AIIT in Bhuvaneswar. Uh, we have been chatting since morning and she has told me so many good things about both the institutions, KIIT and KISS. Just to give you a little bit of background, you all have received the email, but she is a professor of management and vice chancellor of KIIT deemed to be university in Bhuvaneswar. Uh, during her distinguished service in various capacities over two and a half decades, she has made a lot of contributions in making KIIT a top ranked university in India. She is a popular teacher, author, leader, researcher and innovator. We all should uh, really take away a lot of things from the conversation she is going to have today. Uh, a little bit about her background. She is a Fellow of the Royal Society of Arts from the UK and Fellow of Computer Society of India. And she is also a postdoc from Taiwan and a PhD in management. She has many wonderful accolades under her belt and it's my pleasure to invite Professor Samantha to come and talk to us. Thank you. Very good morning to one and all present here. Most respected Professor Vibhushita and all the remote dignitaries present here, students, faculty, members of I would like to thank the institution and the leadership for inviting me to share my experience with the stakeholders of the institution. What this country looks like to get the clues and examples. I think I am very much fortunate to be here. I thought of selecting this topic as the how to build the strong institution because as Professor Devasmita has already communicated that I am associated with KIT and KISS since very beginning. Why Dr. Samantha, Dr. Chitananda Samantha thought of studying KIT and KISS and he established the industrial training institution in 1992 and um, in one two years he tried to get maximum 10 to 12 students in the campus for taking the industrial planning institution course and after that in 1995 he decided to have the polytechnic starting with only 12 students two staff two faculty today KIIT and KISS are with 70,000 students 5,000 faculty 15,000 staff there itself uh, we are listed among one of the Institute of Eminence, also by notified by the Ministry of Human Resources Department three years back among best 10 and best 10 public and best and private institutions in the country. We are also getting number one rank in area. So, uh, in the process, I taught regularly to the students, but mostly I taught to the tribal students, indigenous students. By choice, I thought to teach the tribal students because uh, I was teaching to the law students initially but after teaching for a few uh, years, two, three years I realized that uh, while taking classes for the tribal students I realized perhaps those kids needs much more hand holding than the students we are having in KET of course those tribal students are also part of KET but I thought those students need more hand holding and more experience based learning so while we built up two institutions like KIT and KISS and today perhaps the whole world is looking towards KIT and KISS that in 25 years how such a big institution can be built up perhaps we all are fortunate ever now to get associated with Dr. Samantha and experiencing that in our lives. So I thought while uh, Professor Sahu and Professor Devasmita planned my lecture here, I thought that how to build the strong institution in this country. If we see the uh, sustainable development goals, uh, in kit and case as we do, as we are connected to the society and do lots of social services, we are very closely associated with United Nations and we very closely work with them with all the organization of United Nations, UNICEF uh, or UNESCO or United Nations itself. We are working closely with them on Millennium Development Goals also as we started our journey. 25 years back again we shifted to sustainable development goals and the goal number 16 
that the strong institutes, building a strong institution for transform, transforming this world. So I thought let's take this topic and discuss about it in case that how an institution can be built up, not only in isolation, and institutions can be built up by connecting to the community, connecting to the society, connecting to the culture, and growing together. So I wanted to discuss with that with the other students in this hall. And uh, in Kit, another thing we all believe that uh, wh whatever we do there in the campus, uh, normally we go through the uh, traditions, culture, because we want to get grounded with the tradition and culture of this country. So we are known for the technical education and maybe 40 to 50 percent of the students of my university, they migrate to all the developed countries for the job and they work there. But inside the campus, we ensure that they are connected to the tradition and culture of this country through different societies, the programs, connecting to kids, connecting to the communities and the people we are adopting, we are grooming, we are helping them to develop. So in that way, we always start with some type of incidents. We do some type of activities. Our students will be getting opportunities to get connected with the culture of this country. So this is the invocation which is very close to my heart that Sasi Wab, that whatever we do in our home normally in this country, we chant this mantra and the meaning is that may that wealth protect everybody. And all other meaning, whatever you have derived afterwards, that whatever is being done through this puja or through this yajna, it should benefit all. At that point of time, when we talk about education in this country, I have read all the Vedas during this COVID period because I got lots of time to read Vedas because of this lockdown. So all four Vedas I read and all Brahmanas I read, both in English and also in Hindi. So while doing that, I came through one system of Vedic education as I work in education, education is very close to my heart that while the students are going to Gurukul and they are starting their education in Gurukul ashrams, the teachers were performing on yoga. Teachers were performing on yoga. And in that yoga, all the hymns were being chanted, were being chanted of Vedas. And while the hymns were being chanted and all yoga were being given and all the lords were being invited, the teacher was taking the oath, the teacher was <coughs> making all types of sacrifices there that whatever benefit will come from this yajna, let's all those benefits goes to my student in that yajna activity. And whatever I will be doing for the cause of the student, that benefit also go to my student. That should also go to my student. So with that objective while that education system was starting in this country, maybe that level of sacrifice and the objective of the person in Gurukul, the person who was teaching to the students, if we take him as the leader of the whole group, because we see that in Gurukul only one person was teaching. But many students were learning many subjects. If we take the example in Mahabharata or any other Guru Dronacharya or anyone else, the person was one, he was expert in one field. But students he was teaching, they were experts in many fields. That means he was saying, whatever they were learning from him or anyone else in this group or by themselves, that benefit should go to that particular student. Maybe that, maybe that open environment of learning was existing and the students were learning according to their choice, whatever they wanted to learn. So I thought to start with this. And when we talk about the peaceful community today, many things come to us. I can say that peace, community, trust, respect, we all discuss in management schools, in management uh, curricula in, I can say that with different uh, incarnations. Because while we talk about management, lots of things come to our mind sometimes we think that we will be instilling the leadership skill. Just in the morning your director was, just before sometime your director was teaching me, in management schools now we are uh, discussing with me, he was saying that in management school nowadays we are expected that different skills should be taught to the students in the school itself as soon as they will be job ready. Job, the 
uh, we are expected to meet the requirement of the different corporates, the public sectors or private sector, whatever is expected from the students that is supposed to be taught by the institution. Now that is the level of expectation. So why we discuss about this and uh, what I have understood about building the institution, I think that in building any good institution, perhaps those four things come to our mind and same thing was being, uh, I can say that endorsed by your director that when this uh, uh, world is changing so fast, how the institutions would address to this. And something was coming to my mind or we, we discussed in the boardroom that uh, to get to be up to the time, making ourselves relevant to the time, perhaps one thing is very much required to get connected to the people, to get connected to the youth or the generations. And how we will be getting connected to that, perhaps getting connected to the community is the easiest thing for nowadays for the institutions. Somebody was telling me about Sodhyatra, one of your faculty was saying, one faculty of Aram Ahmedabad is connected to Sodhyatra, he is visiting different places in North East, connecting the students with the innovations of the generations. And I think the basic objective of that, getting connected to the community, it's not that whatever they are doing will be learning that. It's that in the process of connection, in the back of our mind, lots of learning happens. If anyone is addressing a problem in such a way, when we see that problem, maybe we may not adopt in the same, same way, but in the back of our mind, many things continues. And getting connected to the community, KID has done lots of things in that front. We have adopted 140 colleges in the state. We are mentoring them in education for innovations. We are helping their students to come to our campus in summer vacation to learn different skills, to learn communication skills. So many things we are doing there. We have adopted around 15 panchayats in different places. With, his, with KIT University, we are having a big tribal institution for 30,000 students, yeah. and which is completely free of cost. And with that institution, this year we have opened another five schools around the state that is being sponsored, sponsored of course, by different corporates. Because still now KIT is learning case, that private institution, and KIT cannot afford to provide free education to much more children than 30,000. So we have tied up with many companies like Imami or Modila Ruswal Group or many other companies and they are sponsoring for one one case. Of course now we have they decided to take the infrastructure cost from them and afterwards we will be planning what to do. But in that way we are trying ourselves to getting connected with the community and understand the community. And we have developed many courses like uh, tribal resource management. As we say the tribal dominated state that what is the resources available in the tribals and how we can do marketing of that, how we can bring it to the forefront. And studying about tribal culture, their scientific background, their jurisprudence. Uh, because while we talk about indigenous, I was talking to one researcher of USA on indigenous uh, people. He was saying that if anyone has come to Bhubaneswar and or has gone to USA, any indigenous person you are talking about stayed there for five years, and we are making study on them, that is not a study of indigenous. While I talk about indigenous, it is particular about the environment of that place, particular about the natural food available there, the natural system of upbringing, starting from the grooming process up to the jurisprudence process, how it is helping them to grow, that really means indigenous. If we are doing research on them, then only it, then it will get the accurate result. So as we are working on indigenous people, you be very mindful that on which, on which generation, on which community you are working. And if you are particular about that, then only your outcome can be fruitful for this group. So I remembered it very nicely. I spoke to that person for five years back. So we got connected to the community and sometimes uh, somebody was asking me, many people ask me that you run such a big institution, how do you do that? But I understand that only one thing works in any big institution that is the trust. Because managing 5,000 faculties, 15,000 staff, 1 lakh people, perhaps if I stand somewhere I cannot see anyone. But only if the trust is there and confidence is there and freedom is there, then only we can do. And in reciprocation the regards will be there. Another one question was there from your director that how you create the respect among the people. 
I said because Kit is at the first generation institution and we are having uh, direct impact on the people and we have set the direct example in the society that respect factor is naturally created by the people and the authorities and maybe because of that they are so passionately connected to the purpose because purpose created, purpose communicated, it is being done by the same person the purpose created by the visionary leader like Dr. Samantha and it has been transformed to the staff or students or general public whom he deals perhaps it is directly communicated so there is no information base so in the same way it has been designed and communicated it is the same thing and while we talk about peace the different people give different opinion have given different opinion at different time if uh, Swami Vivekananda you see and I see that he is most, much popular nowadays with the youth my, I see my own younger brothers and sister, they read a lot about Vivekananda. Uh, even my younger brother, if you have is perhaps he has just completed uh, his PG in medicine. And I see his, most of his friends get connected to the concept of Vivekananda and my children, my child also. I see they are also, his friends get connected to Vivekananda. And if we see Vivekananda, he, has, he had a concept of universal consciousness. And he always tells that if you leave everybody yourself, get connected to the people, then only you can have that sense of consciousness and everywhere you can get the peace. So that was his concept, living own body and mind together and making your body and mind universal that automatically you will be connected to others, then you will be having that broad feeling of universal consciousness and slowly coming to Dalai Lama as I see that he talks about mostly the inner peace, what leads for that, what one should do, individuals should do for that. So in his concept, he mostly talks about community, the world, and how peace can be the, I can say, the tool for maintaining harmony in this world and the community. And Mahatma Gandhi, the power, he always talks about, is very good quote, I, like this quote, power of law, while you will be overruling the law of power, then only it can transform this country. So while we talk about peace, there are three aspects, that peace of earth, when we talk about the peace of earth, normally we talk about happiness, the freedom, the non-violence, and the peace of strength, we can say that we talk about power. Then while we talk about strength and power, the Mahatma Gandhi principle comes to the first place. Then comes peace, thought, conflict, studies, then violent, non-violent, behaviors and other things come. So why do we talk about inclusive approach to the peace building? Uh, inclusive approach means, I said, when our founder started KET, why he started KES? Because he wanted to teach the whole community. He understood very well that KIT is for quality education. But if those students are being provided with quality education, they are not connected to the community, maybe the values should have been created through connection with the community itself that would not have been possible only with the isolation of the growth of KIT University. KIT and KISS together gives a different identity to KIT because why we talk in the central level, national level, anywhere else, or if you see our curriculum pedagogy, we are, bringing, we are able to bring diversity into the curriculum and pedagogy, it's because of the existence of KISS. It is because of the, our association with number of institutions and community in the campus. So why we talk about inclusive approach to the peace building, many things come to the picture. First is how we connect ourselves to the community or the people. And second things come how with clarity we communicate with the people. I remember why we adopted the communities in the beginning. There are lots of resistance from the local people and local leaders that why those communities will be connected to your institution? Why those institutions will be adopted by you? What will be doing with them? Do you think that we don't have the capabilities to do this? So with the how, with the clarity we will be communicating to the people that what really we want to do with them. But after three years now we find that every day we get requests from two, three institutions that they also want to get connected with us. That is, we we want to get connected with you, please sign MOU with us and guide us that how we want to grow. Because you have set the example for the state. And second point is that, what will be the linking point between the institution to institution, community to students or the people to the faculty members? What will be the linking point? 
whether it is the indigenous knowledge, whether it is the findings of the labs of the faculty members we want to the land, or whether it is the academic excellence we, bring, we want to bring to the whole state, what will be the linking point? Or I want to uh, help the students for poverty alleviation, what is that point I want to make them understand? What is that linking point? And how much, how strongly I am able to connect to the hearts with that point itself. So all those things matter a lot. And for that, I think the responsibility of the public institutions becomes much higher. That the public institutions instituted with the purpose of providing services to the general public and grooming to the grooming to the whole society. I think in that case, the responsibility of the public institution, I don't say that private or public, people those who are providing services to the public, then how responsibly they, they can behave with the society. Because while we develop a very big system where millions of people are connected, then responsibility with the institution becomes very high. It becomes very high and those linking points also become very difficult. So the institutional concept in this, con in this country is taken in a very high extent. This uh, sloka I have written here is because while we do any type of puja, we, are, we always pray for 100 years. We always pray for 100 years and for everybody. And Anushtan, what we tell very proudly in our system that we are doing Anushtan is because we are praying for everybody. We are praying for all. We are working for all. We are, uh, whatever we are doing, that will benefit everybody. That universal concept, that universal concept is, uh, I can say that it's very uh, pious, considered as very pious and close to our heart and soul. This sustainable development goal, I was telling that any institution is established in the, in the public sector or to provide services to the people, the UN says that it is their responsibility to promote peaceful and inclusive society for the sustainable development. And from the strong institution's objective, after analyzing the objective of uh, United Nations, I had uh, written some of the points that what is their major focus. The major focus of United Nations was having a peaceful institution to establish a just society, responsible, inclusive and performing institution is to be established, where utmost democracy is to be given to all the stakeholders to express their thoughts, to express, to execute in actions and promoting equality in the system. Quality education and effective healthcare is one of them. The resilience between economy and ecology, how environmentally the people or stakeholders can be conscious. Then designing the disruptive technology which is going to change the world. Then coming to the establishment of peaceful and just society, while we talk about inclusive, then in inclusive it comes always about working together. As I said, in case and case people work together irrespective of their educational, geographical or cultural background, maybe we are having students from all the states. We are having students from 65 countries around the globe. We are having students from 16 tribal communities, those who come from different jungles. The students come from Europe, they come from USA, they come from Delhi, they come from Mumbai, Odisha, and they come from different tribal communities of Odisha and Northeast. And all of them work together by respecting each other, the, respecting each other's knowledge base, their analytical skills. Maybe there will be a big difference if I compare one student computer, doing computer science in KI University, anyone student is doing, is studying the culture, tribal culture in case, maybe there is there major differences in many parameters. If I see mathematical skills, understanding skills, maybe computer science student will be better. But if I see the level of realization of the tribal student who is studying the culture, tribal culture, maybe in that way he is much better. And he can provide sufficient input to the computer science student to do his research in tribal culture. He can provide sufficient information to the computer science students in indigenous technology that they can take up as the uh, subject of research for themselves. So in that way, the developing one working culture of working together and respecting each other, that way is very much required. Then freedom of expression, then participation, reducing corruption, dispute resolution system and access to the justice, I thought these are the 
key points we focus on in the campus while we develop the working system. As I said, KID started from 1997. You see, in 2004, just after six years, we started in 1997 in October 8th, and in 2004, KIT got the university status. Just after six years, it got the university status. In February 16th, we got the university status in 2004. And by that time, we have got all the accreditation. Accreditation from National Assessment and Accreditation Council, National Board of Accreditation. Why do I say? Because in, the, in KIT, many times we discuss, perhaps this institution has never struggled for the survivor. Always, Whatever we did, maybe KID has sufficient resources or not, I don't know. But the purpose the Honorable Founder had created for each one of the stakeholders and it had populated so strongly to each one of the stakeholders that in initial period of struggle also everybody were, I can say that, trying to have excellency in each and every activity he or she was delivering in the campus. Either anyone is teaching, anyone is administering, administering anyone is building the institution. Everywhere, anyone and everyone was trying to ask, to provide the quality services, quality trying to contribute the quality work and were ensuring excellence in each and every level. Maybe because of that, in 2004, we got the university status. And by 2022, we became 35,000 plus students in campus, starting with 100 students. And today we are having 25 schools, 200 academic programs, 10,000, as I said, direct employees, and 2 lakh indirect employees, and many more. Now we are also having, with the academics, we started also sports, just before some time I was discussing with somebody, that KIT, uh, as we excelled in academics, we became the Institute of Eminence, after that, we started focusing on sports. Of course, while we started academics, we started sports also in a very small way. But now it is one of the best institution in the country to have it, having best sports facilities with seven Olympians and around 5,000 students, those who are playing in different state level, national level and international level games. We are having students who are playing in Olympics, SCR, Commonwealth, and also in World, World University Games. Many places our students are playing and also they are getting the medal. And KIT is one of the first institutions in the country to have the World Cup rugby just uh, before a few years for the junior category. And many more benchmarks have been created in the field of uh, sports itself. So we are, uh, and another one thing we try to do in the campus, we, all, we always invited all the successful people to the campus. Uh, you are seeing that we have invited 22 Nobel laureates, but why KIT became BIM University? Normally, if you see in the private universities in this country, the founders are the chancellor for many years, 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. But always KIT has invited all the people of repute, maybe the retired university grants commission chairperson or the renowned academicians of the country as the chancellor of the university because as the founder was also too young, while he started the institution and all the people those who were working with him were too young, he always wanted to bring the excellence and examples to the campus as well as the system will be grown by seeing them or idealizing them automatically. Because while today uh, we have established a very good integrated system of academia and industry relationship, I will give one example uh, before, just before COVID. Uh, we are having an industry academic system. We offer on around 12 open elective credits where it is open to the students, either they will be taking uh, courses from other schools or they will be taking courses from industries. That is open for all the students. So we are having tied up with many industries. We are also having the same place. One day I, I was visiting the School of Civil Engineering and while I was visiting the School of Civil Engineering, I found many students are roaming here and there with suit and ties with them and suits. I thought, what are they are the KIT students or somebody came from outside. So I just went and asked to their dean that who are those students? Who are those who those were roaming, roaming outside? He said, no, no, they are all our students. I said, they are all your students from, but why they are in formal dress, so much well dressed? They, he said, you don't know, since last 10 days you have started classes in Simplex. And all the, in the initial years, they are all vice presidents, general managers, the head of HRs, head of their um, uh, plant, everybody was coming and teaching them. Then in last 10 days, all those students are idealizing them 
and in the way they are dressing up themselves, in the way they are carrying up themselves, and in the way they are speaking to them, slowly the students are emulating that. Maybe that also happened in KIT University campus because we got the chance to work with all the successful people or, or all the performers, those who have set example in different fields, either university grants commission chairperson or vice chancellors of different universities or professors from IITs, professors from other central universities. Maybe they slowly they set the example for the institution, knowingly or unknowingly. We learned it, emulate it, and maybe we have grown for that. As I was saying, this is the rank of head. I think most of the people must be knowing that now in the world, in times of education, also KIT University is among 601 to 800. And we have got all the good grades in accreditation. Of course, for IIMs, it does not matter. And with KIT, as I said, we have developed another one institution as Karinga Institute of Social Sciences as our social venture. And now KIS has also become another one success story for KIT or for the whole world. Is one of the big, largest or one of the, uh, I can say, the biggest tribal institution of the world. Uh, there we are teaching, I say, 30,000 students. But in case the unique model we have adopted, we tap the students in a very early age, at the age of five. And all of them are from different tribal communities. I don't know the students that Unita is present here, we must be knowing or not knowing. Each and every tribal community is having a different talent. They are um, houses, their communities may be just uh, 10 meters, 20 meters away from each other, but each and every tribal community is having different dialect. So when the students come to the campus, all of them are having different dialect. Nobody must be understanding that what the people are talking with each other. So a very unique model we have developed that whenever we are beginning at the age of 5, for the past 3 years, we have developed a system that the senior students of the same community are their mentors. And we have developed a system that they will be educated in the, same, in the same dialect for three years. And slowly in three years, they will be transitioning from their own dialect to the vernacular medium like Odia in the state. For the first three years, those students and the faculty or the teachers of the same community, they will be interacting with them, teaching them, educating them by translating from the Odia language to their own dialect. And after that, after three years, what happens? We expose them to different disciplines of studies and different sports. Because in Odisha, uh, as I have studied in the state universities, and I hope all of you must be studying in different institutions, in Odisha at that point of time, what we realized, always the sports champion in any institution, universities, we are finding either he or she is a tribal boy or a tribal girl. So we wanted to tap that strength in a very early age. So after three years, we expose them to different branches of studies and different sports. Every day, two hours, we leave them. Whatever sports you want to play, you please play. Whatever you want to study, you please study. So slowly, they get engaged with the studies. For next two years, we do that. And in, uh, particularly from standard four and standard five. One, two, three, they always struggle with the language. We help them to learn the Odia language in transition period. Four, five, we leave them that whatever they want to do, let them do. Because the number is very high, 30,000. So we get hundreds of students opting for different type of sports. If we say the chess, maybe 600 students are there in case those who are playing chess and different, in state level, in national level, in different places. And out of 600, maybe 30, 40 are very good players. They are the rated players. They are attending different games. And they are, those students are very good uh, Many students are there, they are very good in archery because archery is the, I can say that indigenous sports for the tribal people. So one of the uh, boys is being prepared by national government to participate in the next Olympiad in archery. So in that way we connect them to different sports and the facilities and 6 to 10, 6 to 10, those who are either playing or studying, we teach them to be much more serious in their career, in their performances. And what one thing I have found that perhaps grooming a child, single child at home is very difficult, but grooming many people together for a particular thing is perhaps much easier. Maybe we are connected to the institution so nicely, maybe that's a different skill. And that skill, I think, when so many students learn together and they work for a purpose, I can say that natural competitive 
the screen is created. I think being in management, you must have seen the NDTV interaction of uh, many leaders from India in Davos, the present World Economic Forum uh, event. And in that um, discussion, few questions were there from the anchor that uh, from all other countries, there is only one stall. Then from India, why so many stalls are there? Why all the states of this country have come with different stalls like Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, they have come with different stalls. The answer was that, the person said that, yes, we all are talking about cooperative uh, system, but in Indian system, it is competitively cooperative. So it is cooperative competitiveness. So he was explaining in that way. For that, all the states are trying to clear their own identity. And with that, their competitiveness is there, but they have come together and they are uh, sitting in the Indian zone only. They are not sitting separately and they are not sitting with any other countries. So that is a cooperatively competitiveness. So in that way, perhaps while we do the mass management, I have found each and every student, if our other founder also, he always says that each and every student is having enough potential and if that potential is being tapped in the early age, and it is being nurtured properly, then BSC can be successful. If those tribal boys coming from the jungle, they can play this year, they can qualify in NEET, they can qualify civil services. Many students now from here are qualifying for civil services. All the, I can say that every year around 50 or more than that, students are qualifying for National Talent Scholarship for doing PhD in the national level. Because what we find and what we have experimented, each and every child is having an unique potential. But it should be tapped in a very early age and they should be groomed properly. And second thing what happens in case is that for each and every activity, the trainers are of very high quality. They are there from the international level. If I take the example of rugby, we are having five coaches from different countries of uh, different European countries as their coaches. If I say archery, maybe the best coach or one of the best coach of the world is there available with them to train them in archery. So in that way, the grooming becomes easier for us. Maybe that can also be another one example we can think of. Then, um, second thing is that of uh, rapid growth of kit and case is uh, making the system fully transparent and public. Because what we found, realized uh, before 10 years, that while we are having cap capacity of around 10,000 students in case or 10,000 in case. At that point of time, we realized with 10,000, 20,000 population, it will be very difficult for us to manage or to have control of everything individually or with a group of people. So we wanted to build up a system where each and every stakeholders are connected and we implemented SAP in CAT and we made the system fully transparent as such it can automatically run with the capacities, capabilities and involvement of each and every stakeholder in the system. So that helped us a lot to run such a big system in a much more effective way. While we say, when I, while we made the system transparent, then we thought that how to make the people responsible and accountable for that. So while uh, we wanted to do that, we thought that only one thing can make them more responsible that if we are able to connect them to the system emotionally. Maybe our honorable founder is mastering, mastering that how to connect the people with the purpose emotionally. Perhaps he knows it, but his style of working I have seen that he always gives ownership to everybody. Any Maybe he takes all the responsibilities, he works or I work for some events like I am doing, working for doing accreditation for the institution or we are uh, bringing many international people from outside to the campus. But at the end when any success is coming, always I say that all successes are of my faculty members, those who have contributed. All successes of my students, when I talk to the students, we always say, Whatever success we have got in this university, that is because my students have done best in this world and you all have contributed in this way for this purpose. And we quote it, we decide it and we put it in the public forum. That yes, 
you all those this group of students have contributed this for this purpose like technology has brought this achievement to this campus it has been appreciated by this body those group of faculty members have done such publications such innovations that has been appreciated by those people so publicly we wanted to give the ownership to each and every stakeholders and we slowly found that that made them much more responsible what they were previously and that transformation has happened in last two years itself and slowly it made the system inclusive and each and every stakeholder slowly get collaborated with that and while the many people got connected to this and we tried to make the system responsible we found that lots of nascent ideas are there not only with the students of course with the students it is there with the staff members also so we wanted to develop the system that how those nascent ideas can be incubated and slowly it can transform to a to the realization phase and apart from having one technology business incubation center designed by department of science and technology where am i 135 incubators are working on their ideas sponsored by department of science and technology it is one of the best tbi we have got many times the first rank award from government of india particularly from president of india with that we are having another one cell sponsored by the university where around 3000 students and staff members they work on their own ideas that is not only on technical ideas slowly we have giving them the concept that not only the technical ideas can transform the globe the simple thought can transform the world like we are telling them always like in case case is not a technical innovation nothing uh, technological or scientific innovation has happened there it is just a noble thought a unique thought which which has so much of power that it could transform the lives of lots of people it is not only all that the technology only can transform the world so while uh, since last 3 years we are uh, discussing with the faculty members to file number of patents for the university and while doing that of course the technical ideas are being patented in desire as the design patent many design patents are being filed but for the social science schools management schools even to the schools of indigenous sciences literature language even law school we are saying that how their ideas are different in which ideas the novelty is are there in which ideas the power is that, that they are that it can transform and how collaboratively the technology and social science and neuroscience medicine people or public health people can work together as such they can Uh, culminate one idea which will be having much power to transform the world one two ideas we have clicked uh, one thing now we have done in the campus that we could bring uh, many faculty into a platform we have established a common consulting forum that each one of the faculty can uh, work in the domain of public policy developing the technology they can work in work in the domain of community services social services one community development course we have designed for the students where most of them 99% of them have been placed by the government of odisha they are working in different places in the state of odisha and on rural development and rural planning they are helping government of odisha in that so another one innovation we have bring we have brought in the curriculum of rural management that three months they will be studying in the classroom three months they will be going to the villages and village is that that will be surprise for those students they will be taken by the faculty members will be dropped in a place where they don't know anyone and one family will come and say that you have to stay with us for 3 months and in that family they will be staying for 3 months working in that village and submitting the report after 3 months so in 2 years they have to stay in the village in a unknown place unknown house minimum for 6 to 9 months Uh, we have made it little flexible previously it was 9 months compulsory now we have made it 6 months to 9 months they have to stay in the villages as soon as they can understand the requirement from the grassroots level because one thing we believe there that how to whatever we are doing our honorable founder always says that whatever we do either in academics or in research or in innovation or in innovation center wherever we put our effort it should bring some visible impact to the world and to the lives of the people that is one clear cut guidelines for every individual for all the students faculty for everybody so we in that way we find that many students even through nss around 2000 students are there in nss so whenever any activity comes from nss 
Everybody wants to do something unique. Even I see nowadays the medicine and dental science students, they never go there for cleaning purposes. They never go there for engaging themselves in the activities like uh, providing the food buckets or uh, um, engaging the students in cultural activities. Now I find the dental students, whenever they are going, they are putting different dental camps. The medicine students, they are going, they are putting different medical camps. The, our engineering students, they, while they are going on NSS activity, they are teaching the people that how to develop the solar lanterns, how to use the alternative energy for different purposes, either for cooking or for their household activities. So, slowly the innovations are happening in each and every level. Maybe that freedom, that confidence that yes, your thoughts can transform the world, that is helping the students in that way. So in that way, I would think our systems are becoming much more performing than ever. Uh, during COVID-19 also, KID had made lots of innovations. As I said, that I was reading weathers, maybe all my colleagues were doing many other activities. But hats off to all those doctors, nurses. We are having a very good medical college, um, 250 UG seats and many PGCs in many disciplines, 30, 40 disciplines. So we are having around 700 doctors inside. So we had, we are running around four COVID hospitals in different parts of the uh, state. That was uh, for the, we are supporting the state government in providing the COVID-19 services. Because in the state of Odisha, one unique innovations are made by our state leader, leadership by our honorable chief minister, that the COVID treatment for all the citizens of the state was completely free of cost. And each and every individual of the state may be very rich, may be very poor. All of them were provided with the same facilities. For the initial years, they are not allowed even to the private big hospitals to treat the COVID-19 patient for many months because they were going physically visiting the, all the facilities and identifying that where the COVID patients can be treated. So for all the citizens of the state, the same type of treatments were being provided. Maybe that was the unique model which was appreciated by United Nations and the national leadership many a times. And we found that perhaps that is the most judicious way of taking care of COVID at that point of time. So Kim's had cooperated, supported a lot to government of Odisha. And our all 700 faculties, around 300 PG students, the intern students were involved in all those activities and providing services in different places. And we are the first institution to start the COVID testing because we are having a very good biotechnology school. So they started the COVID testing in biotechnology school just after 15 days of notification of government of Odisha. So I am saying so many things because whatever is there in this globe or any issues are coming, KIT, KISS are trying their level best to solve that issue. So that spirit has been created in each and every stakeholders. This is the way we are promoting the indigenous knowledge and skill. Another one thing is that you must have heard about professor of practice. Now I think uh, recognized by University Grants Commission, Ministry of Education, everybody. We have uh, started this uh, system few years back, maybe seven, eight years back, where not only we are bringing the practitioners from industries as the professor of practice into the university, but we are bringing different pioneering people in different uh, sector, maybe the writers, maybe the sculpturists, maybe the good agriculturist. So those who are best in any of the, in that field, we are bringing them as the professor of practice to the campus. And we are putting them, we are keeping them in the campus around two, three months. And we are motivating the students to interact with them and to learn from their experience. Just, uh, I had one chance to interact with one person who has named him as the coffee Buddha. That person is a very literate person. He was working in CRRI, worked in Devensa University for two years. But after that, he thought that perhaps this job is not his cup of tea. So after working in the Devensa University, even Central Rajasthan Institution for some time, he decided to leave everything and to involve himself in coffee production in a very remote place of Odisha in Koraku district. So he started working in Koraku district. He cultivated coffee, he developed it. And now he is known as Coffee Buddha in the state. Coffee Buddha means big, so he is known as that. So he is getting lots of accolades and achievements, lots of awards from around the country and the globe. So in that way we are identifying many people from many places and trying to connect the students in that, those who, are, uh, those who have achieved something in their lives and to learn from those examples.
this is the research and innovation framework as I said that why we talk about within the institution it's not only the governance it's about promoting the innovations so we are very keen on that as I said we not only focus on technological innovation through DBI you must be also having TBI here so many other institutional system have been created there itself. So maybe for that, till now, KRT has produced around 5,000 entrepreneurs working in different domains. Of course, our alumni strength is also very high. It's around 1 lakh, so 5,000 entrepreneurs is in comparison to that, maybe less. So for instilling the culture of innovation at the university, we have different type of centers, the faculty, the students are engaged in different activities. But maybe all the institutions are doing in different way. But while I say about entrepreneurship sale, while I say about incubation center, the difference KIT has done that since first year, we have made a system that each and every student is connected to a social project, social issue. One, four credit course is there, no, three credit course is there. Where the students are exposed to 17 social issues, we have listed 17 social issues of the country. We expose them to different social issues, those 17 social issues. Then we give option to the students to choose one social issue in two weeks of time. Then they get connected to that and teachers are there to guide them. And they go and visit different places in the state, in the country. They get uh, connected to different events if they are interested for the basic and fundamental research. They are connected to different international universities, the labs. And in that way they get connected to that and they slowly what we see we have developed an activity based learning system, it must be here also, that for each and every course there are 5 activities are given, uh, 6 activities are given to the students. So while activities are given to the students, we uh, motivate them that whatever activities, the designing the problem, designing the problem, giving the solutions to that, they should keep in mind the social issues they are, getting, they are connected to. So in that way we want to group the students that Whatever they are doing, they should, that should be connected to that. In that way, we have become successful that many computer science students nowadays, they are working with the faculties of neuroscience department in Kent on sensor. Uh, many students are working on sensor. In skin and BD, many computer science students are working with the doctors in um, skin and BD department. Many students are working with public health schools, particularly the com uh, computer science students. And many mechanical students are working with orthodontics and dental sciences, artificial limbs in orthopedics. So in that way, the collaborative research and thinking about the people, about the benefit, how whatever we are being educated, how it can benefit to the people. Maybe we are trying to bring the culture of empathy in the campus itself through those courses, through those systems. So I personally believe, and I can say that kid community believes that Perhaps empathy is having lots of capabilities to transform the thoughts and actions of the youth. So these are the institutional collaborations. We have collaborated not only with the <coughs> regional institutions, also the institutions of report around the globe. As I said that uh, we focused on internationalization of our activities in last 10 years very rigorously. Though we are very fortunate to get the foreign students in campus since 1999. And we are one of the uh, university in the country perhaps having the largest number of foreign students. It's around 2,000 foreign students, regular students we are having from 64 countries. Of course, many are there from Africa and Asian countries, very few are there from other countries. But then also, getting 2,000 foreign students for regular program for any institution in the country is very large. And uh, for uh, the exchange programs, we get many students from all other developed countries also, particularly in computer area of computer science and social science domain on indigenous technology, medicine also many students come and study there. So uh, in last 10 years what we have done to make, we understood that getting foreign students in campus is fine. Uh, getting faculty, those who are trained somewhere across the globe is fine. Around we are having 70% faculty members, those who are trained or associated with different international universities in their research, innovation activities. But with that, we wanted to bring the international perspective to the curriculum and to the whole system itself. So in that way what we did, not only we designed the activities in such a way that it is normally what happens in happening previously with us also, while we are giving the examples through the case studies or through uh, 
I can say that doing some social projects, we are trying to evolve around the regional or the national issues. We are going through the national agenda, we are going through the state agenda for the social issues. Then we are analyzing the different policies, the budgets, the many things related to that in nationally and uh, state wise. But slowly we try to bring the international or the global perspective into the campus. So we have taken around 3-4 uh, agenda to our innovation system. One is uh, climate change, second one is sustainability, third one is uh, policy making, not only in the national level, in the international level also we are trying to collaborate with the United Nations and also the UNESCO for that. So many internationalized perspectives we are bringing into our pedagogy itself because we found that curriculum through while we are having the exchange program with different international universities, we found that curriculum of Indian universities or institution or international universities are almost same. 70 to 75 percent similarities are there. But coming to the pedagogy, lots of differences are there in the way we teach to the students, the perspective we bring to the class and we make the students to think of and in the way in the good institutions happen maybe that they must be happening in IIM Ahmedabad which is one of the best institutions in the country but in last 10 years we have tried to bridge that gap and wanted to bring different international perspective into the pedagogy itself so while, we talk, while I talked about the democracy of thoughts and actions you must be thinking that how you are giving freedom to so many people to think and and work accordingly. Many times, many people, those who present here, they also ask us the same question. How the people, whenever anyone is coming to my office, somebody comes and asks him that whether I will offer you some tea or coffee or some, uh, or water is being offered. And people ask me that whether you have instructed those people to do this. I said that here, nobody instructs anyone. Those people understand that, whom to offer, when to offer and what to offer. After seeing the people, maybe that person takes the decision that what you will be serving. If I am having any personal choices, I may inform him, but that person understands that what to do. If I am going to convene one conference, or Professor Sau is going to convene the conference who is with me from my school and who is the alumnus of this. I am Ahmedabad, we are doing faculty development program, spent years, few months, six to seven months, he has stayed here, he understands your system better. If he is doing any conference, the, my event manager understands much better than me how this event can be conveyed. How, what really Professor Sahu needs if he is organizing one international conference, if he is organizing one seminar, what really he needs must be that event manager knows it much better than Professor Sahu. So in that way people have been empowered from the grassroots level. So all the governance processes have been decentralized and each and in each and every level people have been authorized or they have been empowered to take the decision. Then promoting the equality in the system, as I said, trust is one of the major factor in health administration. Respect for all is another one, uh, I can say that, major factor in health. When, even when the students make indiscipline, we always tell them, whenever you are coming to us, whether you have been respected or not. In the morning I was discussing that the culture of kid is that any student, any faculty, any staff, even if they are coming to meet me, or chancellor or honorable founder, they are supposed to meet him. Nobody can say that I, I don't have the time to meet him. Anyone, any student, even uh, maybe I meet around 100 to 200 students every day. But maybe slowly we have developed that skill that how to meet the students, how to address their problem. Uh, of course, we have maybe we have started with 100 students and we have grown in that way. That skill has been developed, but the whole culture has been developed accordingly. If any student is coming to Professor South's chamber and telling him that I am having some problem, he can never say that I don't have any problem or I have in class. That liberty is not there. Anyone maybe in that culture, our system does not allow us to do that. It's not that somebody is watching him, but our culture does not allow us to do that. So in that way, the respect for all, for us, that, that is the process, how we manage the students and the whole system. And access to the leadership. Perhaps that is the biggest, uh, I can say that, strength of each and every stakeholder in Kate and Kiss. That everybody is having access to the highest authority of the of two institutions. And gender neutral, Kate is known very, I can say that, very conducive for the girls' students. So for that we are able to maintain 50% of the girls' ratio till now. Even if we are having the highest number of technology students, we are ratio of boys and girls is very less. 
and it's a very human centric process as I said that the system of empathy, the system I can say that built with the sense of empathy and emotional intelligence so it's a very human centric process though you, though you are known as the one of the best tech campus in the country then also perhaps the technology you all use perhaps it is more human centric or we have made it more human centric each and every technology. As I said KIT started to impart the quality education in the state of Odisha in 1990s. During 90s there was a lot of quality technical education in the state. So quality education was always in our focus and if you see the UN objective of building strong institution quality makes a big difference according to their vision. So in quality education the parameters they define is that everybody should have the access to the quality education that should be connected with moral values then each and every person should be given enough capabilities to explore themselves. As I say we have developed a very flexible system of learning anyone studying engineering even he can study neuroscience and even has some design there itself. So in that way the system has been developed. Then uh, another one uh, very strong point with KIT, anyone is coming to KIT, we ensure that whenever he or she is leaving, he or she should be socially sensible and responsible. Socially responsible, why do you say? Before that we understand that that person should be socially sensible. Many examples are there with me, I remember one of the uh, one parent came to me just before few days to work for the Air Force and uh, they, are, they were the parent of one boy. They said that ma'am, uh, we have come here to thank you. I said, why to thank me? They said, it's because whenever I left my child before three years, he had got placement in Amazon, that boy just recently. Before three years, that boy was completely different. He was never talking to the people, never to our relatives. He was isolating himself only with computers and laptops at his home. But after studying here for one and a half years, slowly we found he is enjoying talking to us, talking to our relatives, talking to the people in and around him. And now he has got placement in Amazon. And while we interact with him, he wants to spread this news with everybody he knows in and around. He is not that shy boy what, whom I have left with you before three years. So we are very proud that we have transformed my child in this campus. Now he, is, he even talks to the maid in the, at my home. He talks to the people, those who are coming to provide some services at home and he wants to connect with them. So that sort of transformation has happened because while we connect them to the social projects or we connect them to the students of case, here our rule is that each case student will be connected to one case student. He or she will be mentoring one case student, either in mathematics, or an English uh, communication skill, something whatever they want to do they will be doing. So in that way we want to make them that how they will be understanding the world in and around them. And once we understand that if a person is becoming sensible, automatically he or she will be responsible for that. And uh, uh, next, uh, the desire for the lifelong learning, we say this because we find uh, particularly the IPI, as we started with IPI, we start the education from the KG level. Even the students, those who come from the skill development program, either IDI or diploma level, we find that the student, when they get so much of exposure, they get connected to different institutions. KIT is not only a single institution, it or case two institution, but they are itself, by taking into the requirement of both the institutions, many more companies, the foundations, social NGOs have been developed. So the students get exposure to get connected with all those institutions and see that how one institution established just before one year it has come up to this level in one year. How people are contributing for that. Even the people, that person can be very literate, educated or may not be educated also. Even the people those who run the canteens, hostel canteens there, they are just a class for employees before three years in Kent. Slowly they develop that skill of running the canteen for thousands of students, 2000 students, 4000 students, they are running the canteen of that sort. So the students get connected to that, the with IPI diploma students, they connected to different labs, the researchers in the campus, and we find around 70 to 80 percent of such students they never drop out after doing IPI or diploma. They, they develop the interest to learn lifelong. Then this is the quality education foundation, how we do that, starting from the curriculum, then the human values is always in the system. 
and as I say, it's very open. The students can take courses in the MOOCs or open platform or they can do anything. Then opportunity to explore the capability, the opportunities we provide them not only in entrepreneurship but also we provide them the opportunity to get the placement till now we get 10% placement. Maybe that those things I am saying it creates the confidence among the students that if I am not if I am studying here I'll be getting a placement. Placement is secure. If I am doing the entrepreneurship I am getting success there. That is another one additional advantage for me. So in that way it goes on. Of course in your institution you must be doing much things. As I said, KIT and KISS are not grown up isolatedly. Many more NGOs, foundations, companies are related to that. This is also another one noble initiative by our honorable founder. He defines himself that when he lost his father at the age of four, and he had around seven uh, siblings with him, with his widowed mother, and they didn't have much landed property with them, and he grown in the, in the, in the midst of severe poverty. At that point of time, he realized that since the very beginning, he had a very unique characteristics. That even they didn't have the, uh, have even to take a square meal in a day, his mother was a very jovial person. Whenever they didn't have any food, his mother was telling him very good stories from Raman, Mahavaras, good examples, those who've been narrating good examples, Panchatantra, Namaliya, that thing, then Janamamu. That's Chanda Mama nowadays. So those stories she was narrating them very nicely, and maybe by listening that stories, all of them were sleeping without even without food in happiness. So he was thinking that even without having a square meal, his mother was able to convince him that they can achieve the excellence. His all the brothers and sisters are well educated. Maybe all of them are graduates or postgraduate. They are doing working in different government or private uh, platforms or uh, Sark can be one of the exception. He was also teaching in one institution in Bhubaneswar after that he started k and case. So he thought that that's power. Power of giving something whenever there is nothing or they cannot get anything at any point of time but the power is that, understanding is that at that point of time he or she can contribute something and make the situation much better. So that confidence, he thought that had the power to transform their lives. So he started an initiative of art of giving. It's not only giving the, any <coughs> uh, material thing to others. It's only it can be giving some type of confidence, helping somebody to come out of his sorrows in any way. So he started one forum of art of giving. So it's uh, observed on 17th of May every year, all over the world. Many people are doing that. And he is pioneering this art of giving concept. Another one uh, taxi program we run. That's the uh, for uh, for addressing the issues of uh, violence against the women uh, in the state of Odisha and other places. We go and we counsel the people, we create the awareness. And uh, our law students in legal aid clinic and through the law consultants we have develop the platform that any victim can uh, come and lodge the complaint at any point of time. So this is the Kanyan Pirani, the another one program we do it uh, in a very big way. Many big social events are being organized in head only to create the awareness among our students and faculty members. As such, more and more, we all believe that more and more contribute for any purpose, we all can own that purpose. If I don't contribute, I can never own any purpose. If there is no contribution, there will be no ownership. More and more uh, contribution is there, then only the ownership can happen. So, lots of uh, such mega programs are now done. Then in KIMS through KIMS, we provide the effective healthcare system, affordable healthcare system. 1750 bedded hospital is there, maybe one of the big in the state. And uh, the environmental consciousness, KIT defines itself since 1999 as the eco-friendly campus. We are the first high-tech campus in the country, first Wi-Fi campus in the country. We did it in 1999. After that, IIT Kharagpur professors visited Cape that how Wi-Fi campus of a, uh, a Indian institution can happen. They visited this, then they conceptualized and I, I had remembered the name of that alumni of IIT Kharagpur, who had initially sponsored to make IIT Kharagpur campus a Wi-Fi. I am just forgetting his name. So though it's a very yeah, very good tech campus known for the tech campus being such a big campus of 500 acres of land. 
on campus with Wi-Fi and each and every student is provided with a laptop, faculty is provided with a laptop. Then also we see that how greenery is maintained. The whole campus is lost green campus and we make lots of drive for the plantation of the trees, climate change and we are looked at the use of renewable energy in many places. We run lots of skill development programs for the school dropout students, either to do the KY program or many other PMKY program, many programs. And we, in that way we are able to provide around, uh, I can say the job to the 10,000 school dropout students every year in, through those initiatives. Then this is the green solutions as they are saying, we provide in the campus. Recently we have put the energy monitoring IoT system in the campus to monitor the energy, to monitor the environment. And uh, recently we have developed one technology, video analytics uh, software as such how the Criminal behavior can be identified through the video analytics of all the CCTV cameras. That has not been implemented, that has been slowly executed. Then lots of, uh, I can say that pressure and uh, lots of motivation is there among the student that how more this disruptive technology can be developed. For that now we have established one tech institution in the last two years where we are developing the technologies particularly in uh, IoT. Then uh, data analytics, video analytics, and uh, of course in ERP and other things are also being done. Yes, robotics, we are producing the, developing the robots there in general in campus in association with the students and faculty members which are there. As I said, we have adopted many panchayas, villages, and other things. Multilingual scale for the case students, I have already said. For any futuristic institution, while we talk about strong institution building, now we all understand that hard work, values, compassion, kindness, command, commitment, loyalty, transparency, those things are very much required. And those uh, nine parameters have been written in the walls of KET in many places. That if we are going to have build a strong institution for the cause of the people, we should not forget those things. These are the reports of Niti I have to emphasize that how many school dropouts are there and what are the problems, how to stop the corruptions, those reports of the state okay, for the Niti I uh, I remember once Barack Obama had said while he talked about Africa that Africa does not need strong men, it needs strong institutions to transform the whole continent. Thank We are so humbled to have you here and talk to us about you, your institution, your vision. Um, yeah, I'll, so we'll take up some questions that we have for Professor Saman. I don't have any questions, but I just want to congratulate you for your work and your because uh, back in 2020, I was working with Rajya Sabha and I was uh, under the deputation of Dr. Ramar Patnaya. And for the solar power parks, we visited Sambarpur and Mayurbanj districts. And we had, I, mean, I personally had a great interaction with the case students. Okay. And that is why I took time and I was like, anyhow, I will like, miss my lectures. And I, I wanted to meet you and congratulate you in person. Thank you. So, Thank you. Uh, congratulations Thank on the and case. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your energy. So, I'm Smita Premchandar and when I got the, and I'm, I teach you two courses here, I'm a visiting faculty, I come from Bangalore. And uh, when I saw Professor Gatan Shukla's message that you are teaching, I, I mean, speaking to us, I really, really wanted to come and listen. Um, very interesting that you talk about involving people because when KIIT was conducting some function online, um, I see, I think, yes. Yeah, and, and they called me from Bangalore and they said, you have to come and speak. And I was thinking, like, you know, the impression I got of the work that was organized online was so lovely and I just thought I want to come and listen. And yes, I'm writing, that's because my my professor hand does listens to everything and writes. Um, and I've taken a lot of, lot of beautiful notes that you spoke. I do want to ask you two questions. One at a large level, one at a small level. 
at the small level, like you've got, and it's actually not a small level, you've got so many sports promotion activities for tribals. And food is a very important thing, right? Protein supplements and so on. So in addition to all the facilities and so on, how do you manage to do the food ones? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll ask the second question. Yeah, have a full time dietitian there to plan the food for the students. And who is the funds? Who is the funds? We don't raise the funds actually. KISS is supported by K only. Okay. Yes. So it comes. Okay. Um, so that itself, I mean, you say it so simply, but it's a very good thing. You know, <laughs> um, getting those food supplements. The second thing I really want to ask you is how do you look at gender equality? in terms of teaching, in terms of students, processes. Um, yeah. It's a very big thing to yeah. do. Yes. While you talk, while you talk about gender equality, okay. I can say that in KIT on equality policy is very strong. I can say that before six years, KIT was not even having the SC hostel. Because before six years, we believe that each one of the students is coming here, either boy or girl, or the students from international institutes, international countries, or Indian, or tribals. Everybody should get same, same facilities in the campus. Same type of hostel for all, three seated hostel, general rooms for all. Each one was being provided with all the books required for studies. Each one of them are being provided with one laptop, one pen. What is the basic requirement for all, each and each one of the students? So equality policy is very was very strong in here since very beginning. And coming to the gender equality, why I, why I say that the girls are much more comfortable in here? Of course, I tell this from the demand for the admission. But apart from that, uh, in uh, in our process, if you see the contribution of the boys and girls or participation of the boys and girls in the decision making level. You see the, uh, the number of members in academic council. Why you choose the member, we see that the presentation of girls are equally with the boys. If it is not 50-50, then also at least 33%, 40% women are there in academic council. In board of management also we see the same thing. If you see the authorities of KIIT, in the senior most level, you will be seeing in PR, in student activities, even if, if deputy director is a boy, then director is a girl, woman. Or if director is a boy, then deputy director is a woman. So in that way, we try to maintain this. Second is that, of course, I had done one course in equality, gender equality somewhere. We Nowadays, we are more focused and we are discussing that how policy can be gender centric gender sensitive, gender sensitive language to bring it in language, to bring it in decor, to bring it in the policies is being required of course. So in policies, of course the, as usual the maternity leave, then the craze for the children, other things are existing. But uh, the policy for the flexible timing for the open employees, now we are discussing on, till now we have not yet finalized how it will affect the workplace culture because uh, for us, it is a little bit difficult because we run a hospital, and in the hospitals, many more em women employees are there. Like uh, nurses, all nurses are women. Most of the nurses are women. All most of the health workers are women. Most of the housekeeping staff and bedside attendants are women. Then, if you are going for such policies, how will be affecting the healthcare in the campus? For that, it's becoming very difficult for us to take the decision, and we are discussing since last few months. But it's a try to bring it. But in our equality policy, we are thinking now while writing the using the languages, writing and executing the policies to bring the gender centric system into the place. That we are I'm Manisha Mahapatra, uh, working as an AA in OB area. As you have told many enlightening things about education and many courses in KIT, also you are uh, very closely related to tribal students and uh, they love you as a mentor. So ma'am, my question is, there are many challenges and issues for tribal education. Can you give some major challenges and issues you and university faced uh, when you have started KIT as an institution? Yeah. Tribal education, as I said in the beginning, the major challenges was there, the reservation was there with the tribal people that whenever those kids will be going and reading in one institution in the city, maybe those children will be disconnected from their own community. So that sort of apprehension were, were there among the 
family members of their own family. But I we found since last in last 20 years, perhaps that has changed. And now we for the admission annual admission of 3,000 4,000, we get around one lakh applications from the tribal community. In last 25 years, that trust has been built up. But initially, we had to depend on the local leaders like Sampons or the MLAs of that area to get the students from their community to my institution. Because those people, as they are the public authority, they are believing that they will never believe me if I am going. They will never hand over their kids to go and study in Kumeshwar from a Moibon district. So we are depending on them. But in the last two years, I think that uh, belief or trust has been created among them. And uh, just recently, we had one um, uh, guardian's uh, meeting of the KIS students. Uh, Professor Pia Sa was telling me yesterday, I have sent to all faculties of IIM Ahmedabad that how one lakh people have gathered, tribal people have gathered in one place and how they, have, they were being provided with the food and services. Because uh, 13,000 students staying in one place, getting education, it's not a very, I can say that easy thing as it is easy in KIA because the students are groomed in a, I can say that in an environment, they are grouped, they are studying the same type of environment. Like my child, if he is going to the university, maybe he can adopt that environment very easily than a child or boy or girl who is being brought up in a different type of environment itself. And in tribal education, another thing is uh, that how to adapt to the culture. As I take the classes, I find very interesting thing. I don't know whether I should label or not. In tribal communities, women are very much communicative than the boys. In the class also, that is that they sit like it. Tribal boys are very shy, they always sit like this. Very less communicative. Any question is asked in the class itself, always the girls will be in the front uh, row to answer the questions. And uh, they are very proactive, girls are very proactive to do any work is assigned to them. Girls are very proactive in that way. And uh, boys are a little shy and they mostly they are into their own world. But in studies they do good, in studies while coming to the analytics, statistics, mathematics they do good. Girls also do good but girls are a little bit more proactive in that way. But tribal education, you have, if we have to promote, the connection has to be established, particularly the cultural connection. As I said, for language we have taken the steps how to do that. The cultural is connected to this place, we have tried to maintain the aesthetic in the campus. We have built up small, small cottages. We have built up the system as a tribal food will be available to those children in the campus sometime in a week. So in that way different type of steps have been taken. We are calling their parents, we are making it free every Saturday Sunday parents can come and meet with their children. So in that way different type of systems have been developed as such they will be feeling like home type of feeling in the campus and they can continue their studies more judiciously, more effectively. So that sort of things have been done. And then this thing I have also seen when I am studying in CEO, I have uh, done my PG in sociology. Yes. So there also I have seen that boys are normally shy type. Yes. And the girls there are very proactive. Yes, they are very communicative also. Yeah. The so local tribes in Korapu. Yes. So they are also studying there. Just to add to this question, you know, you know, in this mission schools, in the yes. Shibana, in the, as we say, in Sundarar district, there is quite a many. Yes. Where uh, the schools are being run by missionaries only, here. but at this is my personal observation, of course, the schools uh, uh, have not come up in that way. Uh, so how you know that's what, uh, but uh, the tribal people must be you know feeling more comfortable sending into the mission school uh, than sending into you know KISS in the initial stages, yeah. right? Yeah. So uh, how difficult you know it might be to convince you not to send their for 5-10 years, it was very difficult for us, as I said, that we are always taking the help of local leaders for getting the students. But now, by seeing the success of the KISS students, already 40,000 students have passed out. Now, if you go to any, I can say that any government offices, you go to secretariat or any government offices, the tribal reservation posts, those who are lying vacant in the state of Odisha for long, all those posts have been filled up by the case graduates. And every year around in SSB also state selection board for the lecturers. Every year 20 to 30 students are qualifying in, to be the lecturer in different colleges in the state of Odisha itself. And many students are qualifying in many government services. Of course students who are studying engineering and medicine in KIT University, they are being placed in different corporates. But what I have observed, this can be my personal opinion, not institutional opinion. 
what i have observed when those two kids have been placed in corporates like uh, can we in accenture data ecs or somewhere else but i find for the tribal children there is they are having very keen interest to come back to the state and serve there in government services maybe in government service government services environment ambiance the culture is soothing them i have discussed with them many a times they are saying that we are not feeling comfortable in bangalore we are not feeling comfortable in hyderabad so we wanted to come to the public services or public services design is soothing them or the type of people they are getting in and around them they are getting more familiar with that that can be very personal my personal opinion but i have realized that yes they are working in different corporates around the globe but many students i am finding they are coming back to work in the public services domain yeah, rooted to the community rooted, rooted, rooted to the community or rooted to the place can be disparities uh, in what people have and what people do not have and do you have something for us to take away from the way uh, you your institution yes. managed yes 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 yeah you see as i said uh, kid university is a tech savvy campus everybody is having one gadget with them they are having laptops they are having mobiles and all are from well off families being a self financing university but in case all of the tribal students they came from the rural areas and maybe many of them are not having even the mobiles with them so it was very difficult for us that how to teach the kids as students so uh, we started uh, on, on 17th of march we closed our institution and 19th itself we started teaching to kids as students because everybody was having the laptops all were very accustomed to the zoom and google platform so they are very uh, it was very easy for us but for kids as students after discussing for around two to three weeks Then we came with the the solution. With case, I we are having having different institutions. We are having one Kalinga TV of KII. We started teaching through that TV itself for all the students to Kalinga TV from standard one to standard ten, eleven, twelve. Then we trained our teachers for two to three weeks. Then we started teaching through that Kalinga TV for all the school students and the college students. So in that way, we tried to maintain to bridge that gap for the students. and after that we established the mechanism by sending them the sms whatsapp teaching in whatsapp then uploading the videos to the youtube and all but uh, that uh, teaching to kalinga tv i think it was much more effective than anything else what we did during pandemic for the kids so grateful that we 